Well, hello, my friends. Welcome to Next Level Podcast. I'm super excited to be with you again today. I hope you're doing amazing. This is going to be one of the most incredible podcasts. I truly say that all the time, but I'm telling you, this is going to be another great one. We had Jamie Winship on last week and I'm talking about embracing trans, uh, tr transition. And now we got my good friend, Jeanette Strauss, who was, this is not her uh, first time around on this podcast. She's been on here before, many years ago, uh, talking about the courts of heaven. I'm telling you, you do not want to miss this podcast. And the great thing is, is that we are going to spend some time uh, doing a couple uh, podcasts um, and talking about what she's doing. So today we're going to be talking about accessing the courts of heaven. She's written, written several books, and one of the books that she's written is on accessing uh, or really the courts of heaven basically and so we are super super excited you do not want to miss it get your pens get your 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 utensils out and get everything out so that you can that way that you can be so prepared to be uh, blessed and, and and ready to to be transformed and and to see all that god has so just uh, help, uh welcome to all my friends hello everybody it's so good to see you uh, a couple of things i want to sh uh, um, share with you before i bring my friend Jeanette up uh to be with us uh, this uh, she's in the green room she's just kind of hanging out and so uh before i bring her in i just want to just do a couple of announcements real quick so that you know what we have going on at lewis ministries international number one if you have not had a privilege to join our Kairos community, it is absolutely amazing. I'm telling you, it is a uh, platform that is designed for believers. And so it's kind of like a Facebook. Uh, and um, I encourage you to join that platform. It is amazing. It's, you know, slowly been built out, um, but people are on there. Uh, even before I started the podcast, people are communicating back and forth, encouraging one another and, and loving on one another. So we encourage you to join that platform. If you want more information, you can Certainly DM me on Facebook, Instagram, all the all the above on all the handles. You have all the information. If you in our uh, Lewis Ministry Facebook group, you can also get the link there as well. On top of that, it is the time of the year for City Awakening. And so we want you to get your tickets for City Awakening. It is going to be awesome. It is going to be amazing. October 6th through the 8th at Crestview. And so you want to get your tickets. The great thing is this year, your ticket is going to include the meal plans. And so it's going to include the meals. It's going to include everything. And early bird special is going on right now. It's $100 off. Uh, so get your tickets now. You do not want to miss out on this exciting conference. It is going to be amazing. we got my good friend Jenny Donnelly and Bob Donnelly from Tetelestad Ministries. you got yours truly. we got some other phenomenal leaders and speakers and influencers coming to share. And you do not want to miss it. And then we got our prophetic teams that are going to be ministering to you. So that's always the highlight. And so we want you to be with us this year at City Awakening. This year's theme is you're more than enough. So get prepared October 6th through the 8th. It's going to be at Crestview. You do not want to miss it. All right, my friends. And so lastly, I just want to encourage you all to keep plugging into uh, Lewis Ministries International. Keep plugging into what we're about to do. God is doing some exciting things. And we are going to be hosting our um, uh, School of the Prophets. So if you have not been raised up, trained up, and want to have a passion and a heart to prophesy, we want to invite you to our School of the Prophets. So stay tuned for the dates for that. It is a free school. And so we want you to be prepared for that. So without further ado, I'm going to bring my friend, my good friend, Jeanette in. And, uh, and I'm just so happy to have her with me today. And so, Jeanette, hello, my friend. Welcome. Hi. So Hello. good to see you. It's so good to see you too. <laughs> Man, I'm super excited for this 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 day. And uh and it's almost like we haven't talked for um had you on the podcast for a couple of years now. And your podcast, both podcasts that we have done, like I told you when we were scheduling this, is that is that your podcast has been uh, every year people say, Hey, can I get 
that download or that recording of okay. your friend Jeanette uh, doing on the courts of heaven and then blessing the land. Now, listeners, we're, go we're going to talk about the courtrooms of heaven today, and then we're going to have her come on. She's scheduled to come on to talk about blessing the land and blessing your home. I'm telling you, you about to get some powerful tools right now, some radical tools. Come on, somebody. <laughs> so I get fired up when I have a friend on, but I'm going to keep my mouth quiet and let her roll today. Um, so Jeanette, tell us, catch us up. I mean, you're not, you're, this, you're not new here, you're family. So oh. tell us what you've been, what, what has God been doing lately? Well, he's doing wonderful things, you know, and I think that's one thing that COVID has really helped us with is podcasting. But it's <laughs> really like shot ministries right out of orbit almost. It's been wonderful, hasn't it? It's been it's amazing. It's really touched the world and it, it's from our living room. It's so wonderful. And uh, so I've been doing a lot of that and uh, really spreading the good word about victory in the courtroom of heaven. Wow. You know, the Lord wants every one of us to have complete victory. And there is a way to do that. Mm -hmm. And so, so I'll just share my testimony and then what the Lord has shown me since. And uh, I'm telling you to encourage your people your peeps, your people that are following. I'm telling yes. you, what, you, I can tell you right now, you will gain victory when you mm. go into the courts of heaven. Come on. Because we do it according to the protocol of the Lord. You know, so many times we've done it according to our protocol or our emotional things. And it's not easy. It's so simple. Just like everything of the Lord, it's so profound, but he makes it simple, right? Yes. His disciples were simple people. That's right. <laughs> we're simple people. And so we need the simple way. And this is the simple way, as you'll find out as I share. And I hope everybody will feel like, hey, that's so easy. I can be doing that. That's right. You that's know, right. or maybe I have been doing that. And maybe mm. I can add a few things to it. You know, so I'm going to start out really with my testimony because that's that's how it started. You know? Yeah, yeah, go in there. Go in, in detail because we do have some new listeners, new followers. Who don't who have never heard you before? So I think starting off with your testimony and leading into where we are today okay. with the courts of heaven. I'll be glad to do that. Um, and a lot of people will relate to me in this testimony. I know, and that is my husband and I uh, were believers, and we raised had three children: a boy, a girl, and a boy. And we raised them every, the best way we knew. They were in church. They were in youth group. Uh, their friends were Christians. And our daughter, we were homeschooling our daughter, who was in the middle of the two. And uh, we were actually homeschooling all three of them, a Christian school program. And and uh, so when she got about, she was 16 years old and she was ahead in her classes. So she said, Mom, can I go get a job, like at a fast food restaurant or something? Because I'm ahead in classes. I can keep up with my work. And that'll get me some extra money because I'm going to want to buy a car. So... Her dad and I talked about it and decided, yeah, we thought that was a good idea for her to learn responsibility even more than she had. And so she went to work at a fast food restaurant. Well, after a couple of weeks, you know, she really liked her job. And we started hearing the name of this guy, Mike, mm. Mike this, Mike that. And so I asked her, who is this Mike? And she said, well, he's a guy I'm working with and he's really nice. He's about he's 19 and he's really a sweet, sweet guy. And I said, well, is he a Christian? And she's like, no, mom, but you know what? I'm going to convince him to be a Christian. I know I will. <laughs> you know that how that story yes, goes. Yes, all, all day long. That's, <laughs> the, that's the justification. It is. So gradually what happened is that uh, we she kept talking about him, but nothing was happening about church or anything. So we invited him to come to our house for dinner. And she wasn't going with him or anything, but just working together all the time. And I asked him about the Lord. And he said, you know, Mrs. Strauss, he said, I've really been through a lot in my life. I mean, really 19 year old, but I've been through a lot. He said, both of my parents were alcoholics. And he said, they were at the bar all the time. So I've raised my younger brother and sister. And he said, I had to quit school and go to work to help raise them and keep a roof over our head. He says, and I can't imagine a God that's supposed to be so loving would cause all this stuff to happen. Well, of course, you know, 
we shared with him, well, God doesn't do that. You know, if your parents were an alcoholics, what's that got to do with God? You know, that's the other way. That's what mm -hmm. Satan does to destroy households. So don't blame it on God. And especially if you don't even know him, you know, <laughs> and so he, he just would, I says, you know, really, if you gave your life to God, he would help you and he would straighten things, help straighten things out for you. And he said, no, I just can't do that. I just, I don't want to do that. Well, he just didn't want to do that. And our daughter, when she turned 17, started dating him and he would come to the house and we treated him very nice. But anyway, she was dating him 17, 18 years old. And when she was like 18, we moved to Michigan. The Lord moved us from Florida to Michigan. And she decided to come with us. So we thought, this is great. He's gone. She's with us. Finally, our prayers are being answered, Lord. Well, we got up here and six weeks later, there was a knock on the door and there he was. He got a job up here and he, he rented a place and she moved out and moved in with him. Now, all this time as a good Christian intercessor, I was warring on her behalf. Mm, come on. Everything I knew to do, I was binding, I was loosing, I was even praying there'd be a knockdown, drag out fight, you know, but they never fight. They just got along and we would pray night after night, my husband and I, and finally, and put the blood of Jesus between them. We'd pray for his salvation. We did everything we knew to do and nothing even seemed to phase anything. So one night, um, after about two more years, actually, even, um, I said to the Lord one night, you know, you must be as frustrated as we are. And, <laughs> you know, I'd like to have a, a strategy from you. Give us a strategy that will actually work. Mm. That we can see something happen that we know you're involved in this situation. So good. You know, I don't know why I didn't ask him six years earlier. That was kind of dumb on my part, you know, but anyway, <laughs> sometimes things take time. That's right. And when you're so sure you're doing the right thing, you just kind of don't even ask. Mm -hmm. I mean, what else is there to do? So anyway, what happened was that night I had a dream. And in the dream, uh, Stacy came to me. It was her and I, and we were in the standing in a long hallway and there wasn't anything in the hallway, but a door, a closed door in the hallway. And she said to me, mom, will you help me? And I said, sure, what can I do? And she said, well, if you go into that room over there and get my things, then get my things and bring them to me. She says, because if they see me, they'll kill me. And I said, wow, that's, that's pretty drastic, but yes, I'll go in there. I'll go look and see. So I went over and I opened the door a crack and I looked into this room and the room was like about a 12, 10 by 12 room. And it, the only thing in the room was a bed and all over the bed were her clothes. Now across from the door directly on the other side of the bed was a picture window. And I could see out that picture window, there was some light on the other side and there was a big party going on. I could tell it was a worldly party because people were drinking, carrying cans around drinks and smoking and having a high old time, not, not drugs. I didn't see, but of course, this has been 13, 14, 14, 15 years ago. So anyway, so what happened is I saw there was a man standing with his back to the window and there was another man off to the side talking to him. And I thought to myself, gosh, they're not paying any attention to what's going on in this room. So I'm just going to come into this room and I'm going to gather her clothes up and I'm going to get out of here and they'll never know the difference. So I kind of opened the door a little bit and I slid in and I was standing right in front of the bed. And I started gathering her clothes up. Now, when I had gathered all of her clothes and I had them in my arms, I started to step back. But the minute I put the last item in my arms, the man with his back to the window spun around and our eyes met. And he had wow. surprise in his eyes. He was like, what are you doing here? And instantly he turned around, but he turned his whole body around and he came through the window and over the bed and was standing face to face with me, with the bed to his back. And he immediately began to choke me. He put his hands on my throat. He started twisting and choking. 
And so I threw my hands up and knocked his hands off. But when I did that, my hands were bound like this. Uh, it was like I knocked his off, but then mine were bound. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, your daughter is a lawful captive of the enemy. Bring her case into my courtroom in heaven. Mm. Stand in the gap, repenting on behalf of the sin that she's committing against me. Ask forgiveness for the sin and ask that I will move her case from the courtroom of judgment to the throne of grace and mercy. Wow. Where I will remove the veil off the eyes of her understanding and she will see the truth. She'll embrace the truth and she'll walk in the truth. And then these words followed that. Isaiah 49, 24 and 25. Now those words were so loud that they woke me up. My husband was sleeping peacefully next to me and I came bolt awake and I was like, oh my gosh, I've never thought about this kind of thing. I mean, she's a lawful captive of the enemy. Yeah, I kind of know that because she's living in sin. So, but I didn't think about it in that way exactly. So I thought, the first thing I thought was, wow, if I go into this court of heaven, then I need to repent first in case I have any sin in my life and the enemy might turn it against me. And so that's what I did. I was wide awake and I just pictured myself, it, a picture came into my mind of like a courtroom and I was standing before a judge's bench. And I just said, your honor, I'm here to repent on behalf of any sin that I've committed against you or against your word in any way. I'm asking forgiveness for that. I'm asking you wash me with the blood of Jesus. And I ask that you would move any case that the enemy would have against me from the courtroom of judgment to the throne of grace and mercy. Mm. And when you do that, Lord, would you remove any veils that are over the eyes of my understanding that have been lies or not truth and that I will see the truth and I'll embrace your truth and I'll walk in your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, what happened next was suddenly the Lord removed a veil off the eyes of my understanding. And he said to me very clearly, you have cursed the fruit of your womb. And I was, I said, curse the fruit of my womb. How have I done that? And he took me back in my mind uh, to times that her dad and I had been frustrated and we had said words against about her. We said things like, oh, come on, what is the matter with this girl? She can't even see the truth. She, she knows better. She's being ignorant. Um, just words that we speak over our kids when we're yeah. angry, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. We can, Word all, curses. we can all relate to that without realizing we literally are putting another veil over the eyes of their understanding because Satan takes that and he uses it. Mm -hmm. So when we talk negatively, then, you know, we need to talk what the Lord's going to do in their life. <laughs> That's and right. maybe that'll bring a veil off because it'll be the opposite. You know, I just thought of that as we're talking just now. <laughs> Actually, that's, that's prophetic. That's it's prophetic. a revelation. If we curse and it puts a veil over, then when we bless, it's going to take a veil off. Right? Come on. That's a good word right there. That's a prophetic word. A that good again. word. I got to write that down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah write that down. So we, go ahead. Say it again. Say, say that again. I so if we curse our children or others that we pray for by saying negative things that true, they might be going on, but our curse, our words of negativity, just enforce it. So mm -hmm. if the curse could put the veil over their eyes, then the blessing will take the veil off. Come on. Wow. Right. Yeah, because the truth of it is whatever they're going through, that's not the real truth. The truth is what God wants to do in their life. That's right. right? That's Why right. would we have prophetic words if he didn't want to do that? Yeah. Yeah. It's funny you're saying that because I just heard, even heard the Lord say that that I have given you the power to remove veils, but you don't even use the power that I have given you 
And I want you to use the power that I've given you to remove the veils and break the curses and see breakthrough and beyond, not just breakthrough, but breakthrough and beyond. But you have the power to break the veils off of communities, off of your family, off of your homes, off of your your finances. There's veils that are over us that we don't even recognize. And that's where I sense and hear the Lord say prophetically right now that you've got to pursue after removing the veils by asking me, God, what are the veils that I have put up on my family, over my life? And so, and I'm going to reverse it. That's what I heard the Lord. There's a reverse. Yes. Of your, the, the Lord says your words can reverse the veils. Come on, somebody. That's a good word right there. Your words can reverse the veils. It's so uh, true. It's like, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Come on. There it is. Yes. So if we're in bondage, if we know the truth, so if we decree the truth over them, mm -hmm. then the truth will set them free. Yeah. It, you, you, Jeanette, you're talking you, we're on the nugget right here because this is 5782 in the Jewish calendar. And, and this is the year of the mouth. And the year of the mouth is the year of decree. And decrees are final. So when you make a decree, it is final. So when you decree the blessings where the veil has been, the blessings will remove the veil and the decree becomes final. So your child and your whatever you decree, it's going to be final. It, it is. It's settled. If I believe it, I speak it. That settles it. It does. And... You know, at the end of this book, I have the prayer for the backslidden and unsaved that people that we're all praying for. And in it, it's all, first of all, it's the repentance and forgiveness, but then it's the decrees of what the Lord says he'll do for them. And we'll pray this before we get off today, yes. these decrees. But something comes to me, and that is this, that when we decree the word of God over someone, it has the power within itself to fulfill itself. Come on. Mm. We don't have, we just decree it and it has the power to fulfill yes. itself over them. So as we change the way we look at things, <clears throat> now I try to look at things that just look like a disaster as a testimony and an opportunity for God. Come on. Yeah. And try to get that off my plate. You know what I mean? Because so many people are tormented because of things that are going on with their kids, where if it could start decreeing and appealing in the courtroom of heaven, what God says he'll do for them, and we get them out of the hands of the enemy so they're no longer lawful captives, because through our prayers for the sin, not for them personally, because they are going to have to get the revelation and repent for their self. But remember, Daniel repented for a whole nation, the sin of the nation of Israel. And they came out of Babylonian captivity, you know, so it was the time and everything. But this is the time. This is yes, the time. I believe this is the time. This is the yes, time. This is the time to come before the courts of heaven, to come before the Lord. Now, I want to say something for, for you listeners. Those are listening. Those will be listening later on. People get Jeanette and Robert Henderson like mixed in together. They never met. In, they never met before. Uh-uh. I say it this way. He writes on the courts of heaven. She gives the tools to the, how to access the courts of heaven. Now, don't get me wrong. He gives you tools as well how to access it. But, she, but what she does is give you the decrees. And we're going to talk about the name of the books and all that. But I want to dive into more like when your daughter, because I know there's part more of this testimony where yeah. when you were up, when God woke you up, what happened there? When he woke you up out of that sleep and gave you that phenomenal scripture. What happened from that? Well, what happened was after I repented and he told me about cursing the fruit of my womb, I immediately repented for that. And I mm. stood in the gap for my husband and I both, because we're married as one, to repent on behalf of that and ask the Lord to turn that cursing into a blessing for her. And then I got up I didn't hear any more. I waited a minute and I didn't hear any more from the Lord. I asked him if there's anything else. Didn't get anything. So I came out into the living room. It was four o'clock in the morning and I opened my Bible. I happened to have a King James Bible, <clears throat> a Thompson chain reference, which is really important because there's a lot of translations that do not translate this scripture correctly. 
Come on. Yes. And I'll give you an example. So when I opened the Bible and I read the scripture, it said, and I couldn't remember ever reading this scripture. I, I don't know why, but I couldn't. Can the lawful captive be delivered mm. or the prey of the terrible be set free? For I will contend with those who contend against thee and I will save thy children. Woohoo! I mean, isn't that amazing? Yes. A lawful captive. That's how they view it because it's in the courts of heaven is these people are tied up in the court system of heaven and the Lord has to deal with this, you know, if there's sin. So, and then he has to have a judgment, you know, and we don't understand that part. He's, he's tied by his own laws. So, but we can get around that by doing it this way as ambassadors of reconciliation on behalf yeah, of sin. And that's scriptural, totally. And I'll give the scripture and I do give it in the book. So I read that and I was like, wow, this is amazing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So I did go back into the courtroom on behalf of my daughter, that she was a lawful captive. And I was there on a pre-appointed court date to the Lord and repented on behalf of the submitting against God. Uh oh, it's okay. Hopefully she'll she'll jump back on. But ask, there it is, right there. We lost you for a minute, but go for it. Oh, okay. So as she is frozen, we'll we'll get this back on. Thank God for technology. <laughs> we bless technology. We move the veil from technology. Amen. Um, but I, I wanted to say this um, has this is all working out. Is that when you access the courts and as you learn the courts of heaven, you will begin to circumvent the plans of the enemy. You will begin to circumvent the, the works of the enemy. And when you begin to circumvent the plans of the enemy, things begin to move at the speed of light on your behalf. And so, um, so I'm just telling you that, um, uh, that when this takes place within your life, things will begin to move so fast that you'll see God's hands move. So I'm going to add her back on. Okay. All there right. you go. I don't know what that's, well, probably because, uh, you know, uh, the prince of the power of the air, he doesn't like what's going on. That's right. <laughs> but that's our right. king does. So anyway, so I did that. I got her into the courtroom. I, I took her into the courts and I stood before the judge. I just said, your honor, it's all I did was I saw Ben. And I was standing in front of it. In, in my mind, I saw myself holding a file, a manila file in my hand, and it had her name on it. So I thought the only thing to do with that is hand it up to the judge. So when I handed it up, even though I didn't see a judge at the time, I was going to slip it on top of that bench. Suddenly, the judge leaned over to take it from me. And when he did, I looked into his eyes. Our eyes met. And I mean to tell you, his eyes were pools of love pure love coming out onto me like rivers flowing and when his hand took that file this scripture came to my mind instantly you have you are no longer the tail but you have now become the head amen and i realized that the enemy had been wagging me around like a tail of a dog mm. And the Lord said to me, I have been waiting for this day when you would truly give your daughter to me. And I was like, all the times I thought that I had given her to him. And then I realized, let the least thing happen. And I jerk her back off that altar again and start worrying over it. You know, like us parents do. But I realized that. At that moment, when I saw his eyes and how much he loved her more than I ever could love her, that all left that fear that anything of wagging around the enemy could do. And I knew from then on, I would always see him receiving her and she's in his hands. And I'll pay, pray in agreement to his will. I won't keep dragging her off that altar, you know? Mm. So then I did, I did the repentance, ask forgiveness, ask the Lord would move the case from the courtroom of judgment to the throne of grace and mercy and remove the veils off the eyes of her understanding. And she would see the truth and the truth would set her free. 
and she would no longer be a lawful captive of the enemy that the Lord himself was going to move on her behalf. Because he said in that scripture, I shall save your children. And that jumped right out at me. I'd been trying to do it myself, but I hadn't realized it. You know, it's like, yeah, you put your prayers to the Lord, but at the same time, you still keep trying to figure out how to make this thing work and you get frustrated. So, so good. Wow. 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 Guys, as Jeanette's talking about, thinking about my our interview with Jamie Winship last week, and he, he was sharing, I've heard him talk about a little bit about this this past year, the difference between complaining in prayer and l- lamenting in prayer. Two different things. In complaining, you're complaining. And when you're complaining, you're coming in a false identity. But when you lament, you're lamenting in your true self. So complaining in, in is, and we come to God complaining, God, and, and, and complaining is simply blame shifting on somebody else. It's like the Garden of Eden. It's the woman you gave me. That's what Adam <laughs> told. It's the woman you gave me. Complaining. God, I'm, I'm upset. God, this is not happening. God, that's complaining versus lamenting. Lamenting to the fact that God, I'm coming in my true identity. God, this is killing me in the area that my daughter is in this relationship mm-hmm. and she knows better. She knows right from wrong. God, it is killing me, God, in this. And I don't know what you are doing. I don't know what I am doing. And I am truly afraid. That's confession, truth telling the best way you understand it and the best way that you see it. And then God moves on the lament and comes through because he responds to your true identity, not from a false identity and complaining. And so it shifts your way of doing it. And what Jeanette just said is she had to move God. The guy's like, I don't understand the complaining of this case that you're bringing forth before me, but I do understand the case that you're bringing before me that's in here. And I want you to see my eyes of love over the case for your daughter. Come on, somebody. I hope this is yeah. rich. This is so good. Does that make sense, everybody? I hope that I hope you yeah, drop a comment. If what we're talking about is speaking to your heart right now, right where you are, this, 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 this man, this is right where I need it right now. Go ahead, Jeanette. I'm, I just wanted to throw that in there. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and you know, I that's interesting what you're saying about complaints and lamenting. I'm going to study some more into that. I like that idea there, Mm -hmm. what you're saying. So anyway, I decided, okay, after I prayed, sorry about that, my little desk thing. Um, I said, well, Lord, I prayed. I thank you that you're the one that's going to save her, not me. You're going to do it because I'm going to take care of the legal realm. So you're free to move on her behalf. And so, uh, as I prayed that prayer and forgiveness for her and everything, then I started looking at the other scriptures that were in that chain reference Bible. And I started writing them down. I started writing the dream down. I wrote the dream down. Then I started writing all the scriptures of what God says he will do for our children and how he'll bring them back to their borders and things. And when I finished all this, finished it, all of a sudden it was six in the morning and I saw headlights coming across through our living room window And I was like, I wonder who's here at six in the morning. It's still dark out. So I went to the porch and flipped the light on. And there was Stacy coming up the steps. I was shocked. I immediately thought, wow, Lord, you are so fast. This is a great answer. You know, I begin to presume all kinds of things like like we would. Boy, today's her day of deliverance. This is exciting. So she come in. She says, what are you doing, mom? And I says, well, I'm up early because I had a dream about you. And what are you doing out? She says, well, I took Mike to work today. So I decided to stop by. Well, our house was way out of the way for her, but she stopped by and I'm never up at six. So, you know, we figured things were going to proceed pretty quickly here. So (laughs) (laughs) I told her the dream. She wanted to hear it. I told her the dream. I read her the scriptures And she just kind of sat there for a minute and then she looked at her watch and she said, oh, that's really cool, mom. Well, I got to go. I got to go do this or that. And up she popped, gave me a kiss on the cheek and out the door she went. And I sit there like in shock. It's like, are you kidding me? The God of the universe, created the universe, had a personal word for you. And it's like, 
poof, right over your head. So she, she left and then my husband got up and I told him all about it and he got all excited. And I said, what are we going to do? He says, well, you know what? He says, you don't try a case twice. Come he on. Says, he says, so we're going to go in on appeal mm. night to the judge until we see something occur. Oh, that's so good. I'll say that again. <laughs> say that, that, that is, oh man, that is like, that is yeah, so right. rich. So us parents that have continually went to the Lord with the same complaint over and over and over again, we need an appeal now. Yes. Because we have his word. We know what he says he's going to do. And we've taken him there in intercession. Now we start our appealing process to see things occur. And we do that through decreeing the word of what he said he'll do. So um, the other thing that happens is Psalms 103.20. When we decree the word of the Lord, it says the angels hearken to it and go forth to perform it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, whoever you're praying for and you're decreeing the word over, they might get pretty miserable for a while because <laughs> their idea of ministry from the angels and, and God's idea might be totally different. <laughs> it's going to get them on track, you know? So uh, anyway, that's what we did. We And she would stop over every night. Sometimes her and Mike would come to dinner. We never treated him any different through all this stuff. We'd pray for him. I'd tell him, Mike, I'm going to be praying for you. And he was fine with that. He just couldn't reconcile at the time to the Lord. I think he was afraid he might have to give up stuff. Mm. You know, like drinking because he had started drinking and he was really an alcoholic by that time. So our daughter wasn't drinking or anything like that, but uh, she was living with him. So on the fifth day, actually it was like the seventh day, but every night we would go into that courtroom of heaven and, and read our appeal to the Lord, what he said he'd do and thank him and praised him for what he was doing in her life, even though he can't see anything in the physical realm. On the seventh day, there was the door banged open and I heard her yelling, mom, mom. So I ran to where the door was and I said, what? I thought something happened. She said, God did it. I said, God did it. What did he do? She said, he tore that veil thing off of my whatever it was over and I see the truth. She says, Amen. I'm leaving Mike today. I'm moving home. Clean out the spare bedroom. I'm moving home. And she did. She moved home. And she said to me, you know, me going with Mike was actually taking me away from the Lord. And I'm like, duh, I can't believe she didn't get that. <laughs> you know, but she didn't get it. Come on. So that's that veil, that yes. blinding that people think they can walk both sides of the line and they'll be OK. They're blinded. And that's why you can talk to your blue in the face and they won't get it because of the veil. So. Mm. You know, Paul had that veil scale over his eyes. Paul, who was Saul, remember? Yes. And the yeah. Lord took the scales from his eyes so he could see the truth. And then the truth turned him completely around. But he was a religious teacher, a rabbi that knew the word and felt he was doing right. And he was doing completely wrong. So it's only by grace that we ourselves walk without error. You mm -hmm. know, it's by the grace of God. Yes. So anyway, what happened is she moved home. The guy started calling and we'd sit around the dinner table at night on like the third night and she wouldn't take any calls from him. And he really didn't want to come over here to the house because of her dad. He just didn't, you know, want to do that. So, but he didn't know what happened. She didn't leave him a note or nothing. She just went out. And a couple days after that, while he was at work, she said, would you run me over to Mike's house so I can get my stereo equipment? So I said, OK. So we got in the car and we went over there and we were sitting in the driveway and she wasn't getting out. And I said to her, well, are you going to go get your stuff? And she said to me, no, let's leave. I'm sick to my stomach. I don't mm. want to even go in there. I don't want any of it. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> you know, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, I was kind of worried a little bit, you know, but she she didn't get it. Well, he gradually moved back to Florida and uh, then she uh, met a guy here that had been raised exactly like she had been raised in a family of ministers and 
evangelists and missionaries. And but he had gotten off in the world too. So they met though and got back on track. And now we have two grandsons. One is like 13 and one's 11. Amen. <laughs> and so then I began to study it, really study it, because I had thought about the courtroom really was like the great white throne judgment thing, you know? And so I really kind of didn't think much about that. And I started studying and realizes, oh, my gosh, this is very real. And this is how we can win every case. Yes. So as I started writing it up, I when I'd run into people at conferences, like I ran into you at the conference, remember, the prophetic yes. conference, that's how I met you. Well, I'd run into people and they were having terrible troubles with their children. And so I would email them the outline and stuff and the prayers and they would do it. And it worked. They get back with me and say, oh, my gosh, my son is in jail or in prison. He just accepted the Lord after I started praying this prayer or all kinds of things. One came out of homosexuality. One, you know, it was unbelievable out of drugs. So I've learned over these years that this is effective. We just don't know how God's going to do it, but that's the test for us. Whatever he's going to do, we at least line up with his word. Yeah. Yeah. Jeanette, when, when you are doing this, because I, I know some of the listeners are here uh, is when you are accessing the kingdom, the, the courts of heaven, what was going through your mind at the time, the first time that you start doing it, what was going through your mind uh, about God? What Because before you were asking God, I need a solution. God gave you the solution, but then you actually had to put the solution into practice. You had to actually do what God told you to do. I did, you know. I guess I was so excited about this and I knew it had to be him that I just did it. I just went into, I just pictured and saw that court, that bench, you know, I didn't hesitate because I'd been searching for some kind of something that would work. And I thought, this has got to be from God, you know, and and because it's all scriptural anyway, standing in the gap. Or, but I have to tell you that all these things, I actually was talking more to the Lord than what I'm saying. I was justifying myself yeah, yes. <laughs> because I said to him, Your Honor, I am here for this pre-appointed court date for my daughter. And I'm remembering how Daniel in Daniel 9 came before you and repented for the sin for a whole nation and asked forgiveness. I was kind of justifying everything I was going through because I knew the word, you know, and I wanted to make sure. So I was like, if he can do that, I can do it. And you listened and heard, but it had to do with repentance and forgiveness and humility, you know, and recognizing the sin, that there's sin involved and, and taking care of it. The other thing I want to say that some people ask me, because there's a lot of people uh, teaching on the courtroom now, which is wonderful for the Holy Spirit to get it all over the world. But I do have one little issue that I want to share with you and others. Mm -hmm. And that is people write me and they say things like, which courtroom do I go into for which problem? So apparently there's things out there to go into different courts for different reasons. But that's all I can say is I didn't go into children's court. Come on. And Come I on. I went to marriage court and I don't go into one lady had a moving court um, because we're going before the same judge. There it is right there. So we're going right into the Supreme Court is how I think, you know, and instead of going through all these lower courts, because there's only one judge that can make that decision on this for us as believers. So I would say to people that may have read other books that say you have, it confuses it up the whole thing because you're going through the same judge and he has time for you. He wants to listen to every case and he can because he's omniscient. He can listen to every case. That's right. That's right. So I just wanted to say that I'm not talking against anybody that writes on it. And I know that a lot of times in the church, if something comes through as truth, it'll start getting all, you know, everybody goes at it from different directions, maybe to get a yeah. new angle. But I would just encourage your listeners that there's one judge and he's the one you're going to go to. 
maybe he is in all these other courtrooms, but I don't think you need to go to those other courtrooms. You yeah, know, don't, I, make it, I, I, don't make it harder than it is. Yeah, I, I just, I just keep my spirit. Just keep hearing, just like a quickening of my spirit was, keep the main thing, the main thing. Absolutely, because keep the main thing, the main thing. I love that because this is the problem. If we get too many varied opinions and stuff, what the enemy wants to do is get this whole thing thrown out. Right. Right. And in every revival, things have happened like that. God will bring a a truth. And then it starts getting all out of kilter and everything. First thing you know, it's a mess and it just gets all thrown out. Yeah. And it's like, right. this is very important, very strategic. It will change the lives of millions, you know. Yes. But begin to use this and are using it and are having an effect. So that's the only thing I'd, I'd want to say. I haven't read any other books on the courtroom. <clears throat> and I think I told you that. I did that because I didn't want to be influenced in any way. Maybe that's not wisdom because I know there's in counsel, but when you're writing a book, you want to keep it to what God has showed you in the scripture. That's right. That's right. That's so right. I don't take from somebody else's whatever they're doing. So I really yes. don't know what is out there, but I just know from what people email me and call me and ask me things like that questions. Yeah. You know? And guys, I hope you understand what we're, what we're talking about right here. This is real critical. It's not that we're putting down somebody else's ministry, but mm -hmm. what, what God gives you, I've always been taught, and I teach our team and our pastors and leaders, what God gives you, you stick what he gives you. Now, other people might have different variants, Every everybody has, but keep the main thing, the main thing, the way that he has given it to you. And that's what Jeanette has done. And that's where really the first time I ever heard the chords of heaven wasn't from other people. It was from her. That's the first time ever. And we've been in a relationship for several years. Um, with, you know, years. We met at our conference at Christian International, our IGAP conference, where, where we are part mm -hmm. of. And, and so the reality is, is here's, here's what I want to tell you. Keep the main thing, the main thing, and just get the tools. And that when you think about it, the Bible says, come boldly to the throne of grace. He didn't yeah. say come boldly to the throne of grace and the marriage count. He said, come boldly to my throne, the counsel of God. And so just really, I know from this talks and rumbles out there over the years since this has become a, a, you know out, that there's been a huge the theological debates on this thing. There has been uh, division in this thing. At the end of the day, keep the main thing, the main thing. Follow what at the leading of the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, uh, we've Jeanette has been on the, uh, um, uh, years ago, and we still have people to this day wanting her book about using it because they've just seen phenomenal breakthrough within their own family. Does everyone understand? If you understand, put it, put it in the chat. But I just want to, I really want to understand, help you understand that, because any time that God has blown a wind on something that comes from Him. Yeah. The enemy will always try to cause a counter decree towards that. Here, let me say it again. The enemy, will, when God brings a fresh wind on something, the enemy is always there. Even sermons, even books, even things that are bringing transformation and reformation, the enemy is right there making a counter decree to say, nope. And that's what happens. He's the prosecutor. And he doesn't want you to get what God has for you. Ah, help me, somebody. I hope you're getting this. He yeah. doesn't want you to get what God has for you. So he's going to decree. He's going to argue and say, look what they've done. Look what this. And, and the re reality is we serve a God of justice. He will give you victory to dance and injustice. But it's truly keeping the main thing, the main thing. Amen. I hope everyone got that. Jeanette, so, so really, um, as we land this plane, my friend, I want you to say, I want you to walk some folks through the chats just blowing up over here Good. this like let's walk if you were with somebody that had a teenagers or business and and they're just man they're just going through hell right now they got a marriage situation how would you best give them kingdom wisdom well what we'll do actually is we will go into the courtroom okay yeah let's do it we'll do it and um so I did want to settle one thing, too. You brought yes. up uh, the prosecutor. 
First of all, one of the things that I discovered in my study was the name Satan is a Hebrew word and it means Hasatan, yes. which means the prosecuting attorney. Yes. And that's something now, I'm not saying yeah. all prosecutors are Satan, but I'm right. saying in our cases in the courtroom of heaven, Hasatan has a title. That's his title. He is the prosecutor. Mm. And the other thing is he's not omnipresent. So he has to, every time we go into the courtroom of heaven, guess what? He has to show up because he has to prosecute the case against us. So he's going to lose every time because we're going to repent and ask right. forgiveness. And we're going to keep him so busy. He can't hardly even stand it because he won't have time to run around and do everything else. He's going to be in the courts with all these millions of people that all of a sudden have his number and say, hey, listen, this is what we're going to do. Now, there's one more thing I want to throw in there and that this is going around in the body of Christ. Like you said, there's a lot of stuff going around. And that is, and I was in a conference and I heard this with my own ears. I bought the CD. I couldn't believe it. This is a big speaker. And he said, uh, God is not judging anybody today. That judgment was done once and for all when Jesus hung on the cross. There is no judgment. You don't have to repent for sin because God did it all. I couldn't believe my ears, except I realized that in the end days, that's going, if Satan can stop us from repenting, if he can make us feel like, oh, Jesus did it all, we don't have to repent. Now, as far-fetched as that sounds, it's going around in a big way. They're preaching this. So I just want to bring the scriptures to the people yes, come on, come on. about this. Okay. So that when they hear this, they know it's not true. And they know, hey, that is a lie. That's a twisted truth. Okay. So this is what it says. This is what this guy said. We aren't living under the law anymore, but we're living under grace. Mm. He says, God's not mad at anybody. He took out his anger when Jesus was crucified. And so we don't have to repent anymore. You don't have to keep repenting. So this is the scripture he used. It's um, in Romans 6, 14 and 15, but he only read 14. He didn't read 15. For sin shall not any longer exert dominion over you, since now you're not under the law as slaves, but you're under grace as subjects of God's favor and mercy. That's where he stopped. But the rest of it, this is what it says. What then are we to conclude? Shall we sin because we live not under the law, but under God's grace, favor, and mercy? Well, certainly not. Do you not know that if you continually surrender yourself to anyone to do his will, you become the slaves of him who you obey, whether that's to sin which will lead to death or to obedience, which will lead to righteousness or right doing and right standing with God. So it's like he said half of the scripture. Now here's another scripture just for that. Hebrews 10, 26 and 30. For if we go on willfully and deliberately sinning after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice to atone for our sins. For we know him who said, vengeance is mine, will repay. And again, and that says, and again, the Lord will judge his people. So anybody listening here needs to know, if you hear that coming from the pulpit, don't worry, you don't have to repent anymore. That's been taken care of. You need to leave that church. I mean, or you need to bring these scriptures to the pastor's attention. I personally would, but I know some people would. And I'd say, you know what? That is not true. And if you continue to preach that untruth, then I'm out of here because I'm not going to listen to it. That's right. Because, That's right. Because it says in 2 Timothy 4, 3 through 5, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, They'll heap up for themselves teachers and turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But be watchful in all things, endure infliction, do the work of an evangelist and fulfill your ministry. So what does an evangelist do? He says, repent. That's repent. Right. That's, <laughs> That's right. the work of an evangelist. So, and, and you guys know the word repent. And as we teach in identity, repentance is turning into turning to a new way 
and in his in, in confession is telling the truth, telling God, as you see it, understanding, God, truth telling, repentance is God speaking back to you what you said to him in the false. This is the truth of who I made you to be. This is the truth. Turn from your that way and yeah. live in the new. Do, do, do you understand what I'm saying? It's it, it, and so we're always constantly coming before the Lord, laying in that place of repentance. It's it's metanoia. That's what it is. To metanoia means to turn in a new direction, to turn a new direction, so that go we way. yeah go another way. So that way He takes what was the case and move into the truth of who you may have been made to be. Come on, somebody. That's a good word right there. I hope you got that. I hope you. Yes. So what we're saying is it's not in these last days, there's a lot of things. That's why the Bible says you must pay attention. Scripture says, pay attention. I'm not just not Clyde just saying the scripture, the logos, the, the written word of God. It says, pay attention, become aware of these last days. Be aware of what's going on. Be sound in the word. Uh, you know, and, and admonishing. That's why the Bible says to know the word for yourself. Stay the word to sow thyself approved. You know, you see, so what we're saying to you is, and what Jeanette is saying to you, you just got to be aware and discern. I, I pray right now, I just pray right now and decree over you that God will sharpen your discernment in this hour, that you have raised your sharp discernment and that you will begin to, discern in this hour right now that we are living in. The pandemic has brought people in such a crazy disarray of thinking and processing. And we just need to get back to the main thing. Amen. I hope everybody understands. That's so good, Jen. Thank you so much for bringing that in. Thank yes. So we just yeah. want to guard people. Put, yes. A good shepherd will always protect the sheep. That's right. You know, and that's what we're called to do. And so you hate it if sheep are being told the wrong thing and they believe the wrong thing. Yeah. So um, we could, I, I don't know how long we have. So, but people could get all of the thing from the book, but yeah, I let me, um, what can, prayer, gonna, what, whatever you want to do. Yeah. Let's uh, um, let's walk a couple, a couple, a uh, couple things through the courtroom. And if you want more information, where to get the book, the courts of heaven, her website's at www.gloriouscreations.net. And so you want to go get the book, um, all of her books. And um, we'll talk more about that um, as we land the plan. But I want to really spend the next five to 10 minutes just going before the, the courts and ha awesome. having Jeanette lead us through this process. Amen. So, Jeanette, go ahead. Take it away. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is first be thinking of who you're going to pray for who you're going to bring into the courtroom. Okay. You, if you write it down on a piece of paper, there might be more than one. You can lay your hand on their names. You can be thinking of one and we'll do, um, I'll just pray the prayer for us. Kind of like, uh, what do they call it when you do a, a courtroom thing? One person represents yeah. the rest. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> I can't, it just went out of my head, but anyway, so the first thing we're going to do is you can follow after me in prayer because we ourselves are going to go into the courtroom and repent and ask forgiveness for our own personal sin before we go to present the case for somebody else. Okay. So you can say, Dear Heavenly Father, mm -hmm. I am standing here today before you in your courtroom. Yes. I repent on behalf of any sin that I've committed against you or against your word. I ask forgiveness for that sin. Mm -hmm. I ask for a washing of the mm -hmm. blood of Jesus over me mm -hmm. and washing away the sin. I ask that you move any case that the enemy has against me mm -hmm. from the courtroom of judgment to the throne of grace and mercy. Lord, where you will remove the veils off the eyes of my understanding in every area of my life and in my marriage and towards my children, any place I haven't seen truth. And Lord, I will see your truth. I will embrace your truth. Mm. And I'll walk in your truth. In Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. 
So mm. now we're all clean before the judge. We're clean before the Lord. And so we can come back in again. And I'm going to just come before the Lord. Father, I just um, come before you to present the case that the enemy would be presenting against my loved one. Mm -hmm. The one that you have their names, Lord, you know their names because this is a pre-appointed court date. This is no surprise to you, Lord. We're here today yes. because you had us come here today for this. So, Father, I'm asking that you plead their cause with those who would strive against them. Fight against those who fight against them. Yes. Take hold of your shield and buckler and stand yes. up for their help. Draw out your spear and stop mm -hmm. those who would pursue them. Mm -hmm. Speak to their soul and say, I am your salvation. Yes. I decree their soul shall be joyful in you, Lord, mm -hmm. and shall rejoice in their salvation. Every one of their bones will say, Lord, who is like unto you that delivered mm -hmm. me the poor? from him that was too strong for him. Yes, the poor and the needy from him that had triumphed over me. Mm. Father, keep their soul and deliver them. Let them not be ashamed and let them put their trust in you. Mm -hmm. Direct their footsteps according to your word and let no sin overrule them. Yes. Father, we... Thank you, Lord, Lord, that, you know, did I repent for their sins? Did I stand in and repent first, Clyde, or not? Um, I don't think you did. I don't think I did. So before I go farther, Father, thank you for the remembrance, Lord, that we are bringing these people before you, each one, for those appointed court dates today. Hmm. Father, we stand in the gap as ambassadors of reconciliation with the power of attorney that you have given to us, Father, to present their case before you as if it's you presenting the case before your Father. Father, we stand in the gap, repenting on behalf of sin that they may have committed against you in some way or against your word. Mm -hmm. And we ask your forgiveness for the sin. We ask that you wash them with the blood of Jesus. Father, we ask that you actually strike the record from the book as you move them from judgment into grace and mercy, as you forgive the sin, as you say in your words, you can do. Father, and then you will remove the veils off the eyes of their understanding and they will see the truth and the truth will set them free. And then we come back into the courtroom, Lord, as we're continuing to present actually to decree what you say that you will do for them. We thank you that we can decree your word, Lord. Father, we decree that they've waited patiently for you mm -hmm. and they're inclining their ear, Lord. They're inclining to hear what you have to say to them, Father. And you're going to bring them up out of a horrible pit out of the miry clay and you're going to set their feet upon the rock and you're going to establish their goings. Yes. You're going to put a new song in their mouth. Praise <laughs> to you, Lord. And many will see it in fear and they will trust in you. Father, I just thank you that they will delight to do your will and Lord, that your law will be within them that they will study your word. Father, I thank you that they will put their trust in you and that you have not forsaken them. Yes. And Father, you say yourself that you'll pour water on him who's thirsty and floods on the dry ground and you'll pour your spirit upon our descendants, mm. and your blessings upon our offspring. They'll spring up among the grass like willows by the water courses. Father, one of them will say, I'm the Lord's, mm. and another one will call himself by the name of Jacob, and another one will even write, I am the Lord's. Yeah. Father, you say for us to refrain our voice from weeping 
and our eyes from tears and our work will be rewarded mm -hmm. and they shall come again from the land of the enemy. And you say there's hope in their end and that they will come again to their own home. Father, we just say that they will say, bless you, Lord, all my soul and all that is within me. Yes. Bless your holy name, Lord, and that you will forget not all, all the benefits that you will bestow upon them and you will forgive all of their sin. You'll heal their diseases. You'll redeem their life from destruction. Mm. You will crown them with loving kindness and tender mercy. Mm -hmm. And you will satisfy their mouth with good things so that their youth is renewed like the eagles. They will decree Psalms 1 24 7 over themselves. I have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The trap is broken and I have escaped. Mm. Amen. 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 Now, you know, there's a place in the courts where you address your accuser. Yeah. And I particularly like this part because for years, you know, we would address the accuser and we were really wasting time giving him attention, focusing on him as if he's going to do anything, you know, that we want. So this is the way that we would do that instead of coming against him. I have taken the words out of my vocabulary. I come against because yes. he says in Job, don't do that. Even Michael himself or in Jude dared not bring a railing accusation. Oh, wow. Come on. So a lot of times over the years we've been taught or we've caught an incorrect way to pray. So to me, I always take it to the Lord and you'll understand once I pray the prayer this way, you may not have heard of it this way, but this is the way you deal with a prosecuting attorney. The Lord says that my adversary shall be clothed with shame. You shall cover your own self with confusion as with a mantle. My father says in his word that his hand will find each and every one of my enemies. Mm. He will make you as a fiery oven in the time of his anger, and he will swallow you up in his wrath. His fire will devour you. Your fruit shall be destroyed from the land and your bad seed from among the children of men. You've intended an evil. You've intended evil against me. You imagined a mischievous device, which you will not be able to perform. My father will destroy your schemes and confuse your tongues. He, you shall be confounded and put to shame. You shall be turned back and brought to confusion because you devised my hurt. You shall be as chaff before the wind and the angel of the Lord shall chase you. Your way will be dark and slippery and the angel of the Lord shall persecute you. Mm. You have hid a net and dug for my soul and destruction will come upon you unaware. And the net that you hid for me will catch you. And into the destruction you plan for me, you will fall. <laughs> Come on. Wow. That's I so mean, good. isn't that powerful? It's, so powerful? it's the Lord's word. Once we're lined up correctly, once we have been forgiven, we have repented, we can pray this prayer. And the Lord is free to do every single one of those things. And that's how we make the enemy the Lord's footstool. That's right. That's right. And we don't have to deal with the backlash. You know, in a court case, the prosecutor, when it's done and the Lord, the judge says, you know, puts the gavel down and says it's finished. That prosecutor just folds up the book and goes on to the next case. That's right. There's no but more. If we, if we come against him, we can be found in contempt of court. You can't be yelling at a prosecutor and binding him and telling him things. You're going to be found in contempt of court and then you're going to be taken off, which right. I have the scripture for that in the book. There's a whole lot more in the book than what we covered today, of course. Yes, yes. But this is a brief outline of it. And um, I hope people are really encouraged. And I do want to say, too, before we get off of it, I want you to know that if people come in and order the book on the site, they need to put in the memo. Um, I saw Jeanette on Clyde Lewis's channel because we will tithe into that ministry what people are ordering off our thing. And I also want to say, too, is that 
on there, when you go to order, if you order the book bundle of the courtroom and the prayers and petitions, because I had so many people after I wrote this book said, well, will you write a petition for this, 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 and this? Uh, so there's 10 chapters of all different petitions, which you can see that online. And if you buy those in a bundle, you save money. And also to clear up any kind of confusion, that bundle is $24. Now I have a bundle on there that's $50 that has flash drive, my outline, a PowerPoint. If somebody wants to teach this, they can, but don't order the big one. If you don't want to teach it, you just want, you know, the $24 bundle. So I just want to clear that up. And I just say the bundle because a lot of times people will order just the book and then they immediately order the prayer and petition book. So then they've got shipping two times, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. that's all I need to say about that, but I just, no, that's so good. Guys, get get the, get the book, get the bundle. I'll tell you that um, we had um, gotten the bundles over the years and we've given them out and people were so blessed and 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 just enjoyed and still have it on their bookshelves and they circle back to that those petitions. And so I want to encourage you today that, that what you heard today is just the beginning of something break breaking through. I would say this, that you're entering to, when you really get and talk about the courts of heaven, it's really going into intercession. And, and really intercession is standing in the gap and, and going on going to God on, the, on, on behalf of somebody else. And, and I really believe prophetically that God is raising up intercessors in this hour. And so I know many of you have been encouraged. Many of you have been um, excited for this time. I want to thank my friend Jeanette for joining us today. Thank you so much, Jeanette. I know that we're going to be doing another one fairly soon on Good. blessing the land and yeah. blessing the house. You guys don't want to miss that. Uh, she's written another book, two, several books since then. Um, but one is on blessing the land. And many of you have been to your property, been to your home, your business. And we have literally used her book to bless the land. <laughs> and so people have, have been blessed by that truly. Um, some have done, uh, I've done it and they moved. And, and when they moved to the new place, they got, they said, we cannot go into the house until we bless the land. I've even had families, kids say, mom, call prophet Clyde so he can come and bless the land. And so we empower them to do it. And, and, uh, and so, but I'm just telling you, you do not want to miss this, this next series of podcasts we're going to be doing. Um, and it's going to be really, really encouraged and blessed uh, for you guys um, all day long. And so now we just thank you for tuning into this broadcast. And, um, and uh, we just pray that um, it will be up later on for you to download, to listen again on our Lewis ministry app. If you have not gotten our Lewis ministry app, you can go to the various uh, Apple Store, type in Lewis, Minister, Lewis Ministries International or LMI, and then it will pop up. And then if you want to go into your Google Play Store and type in the same thing, LMI or Lewis Ministries International, that's our app. And all of our podcasts, all of that will be on there. This podcast will be on there as well. And so we're just so excited for you guys for tuning in and, and go get the book. Um, it's at www.gloriouscreations.net. And um, we so appreciate every single one of you guys tuning in and join us um, at City Awakening this coming year, October 6th through the 8th. It's our big prophetic conference, our sixth year of doing it. And tickets are on sale right now. Your ticket pricing includes your meals, six meals. If you want to stay at Crestview, you go and, uh, go to a separate link to get the lodging. lodging. Uh, but I'm telling you, it's $100 off right now for the City Awakening. But I'm telling you, it is going to be fire. It's going to be so amazing. And our prophetic teams, like every year, will be there. You'll get a prophetic time when you register, all of those things. And so we just look forward to you being with us this year at City Awakening. This year's theme is you're more than enough. We want to encourage you that you're more than enough. And so we're really excited for you all. And um, last thing is, if you want to join our Kairos community, that's kind of like our Facebook it is a community where it is safe. It's it's they have all the garbage in it, uh, and it's just like-minded people enjoying one another, chatter and all that. So so just DM me for that if you want more information about that. All right, my friends, take care and God bless you. And we look forward to being with you next time. Take care. God bless. God bless.